Okay, so we've all been there. We are thinking ahead, thinking, oh my gosh, when are these nappies going to end? I cannot wait until my little one is potty trained. And then you start to get nervous and you start to think, okay, but how do I go about doing this? And I'm here to tell you as a mama of three, what my favorite technique that you can practice from birth is to make sure that your little ones are completely out of nappies before the age of two. My name is Kitty Hackle. I'm a registered nurse. I'm also a lactation consult- consultant, birth, postpartum doula, hypnobirthing instructor, antenatal educator, and I love sharing information about trying to conceive, pregnancy, birth preparation, and anything to do with nourishing your babies. I hope that you find this little corner of the internet a place where you can feel educated, empowered, and excited to be a mama, and I hope that you find this video helpful. Let me know in the comment section down below if you give it a go. Okay, so what exactly is it that I do? And I want to just really dive straight in and tell you that elimination communication is something that is not all that new. Elimination communication, what is it? The idea comes back to our kids, our babies, our infants are not incontinent. They are able to control when they have a wee, when they have a poo, and they don't want to be sitting in a wet or dirty diaper any more than you or I do as adults. And so by learning our little one's cues and working with them and observing them closely as opposed to against them, we are able to lean into what it is that they are telling us, communicating with us with various tools and various cues that we are learning with them how we can preempt a pee or a poo, a nappy situation. And in doing this relatively consistently, I would say I do it kind of like maybe 90, 10, maybe 80, 20 for the first baby. And then even less so with my second baby because I was just a little bit busier. This was something that was an absolute game changer for us. For me, I was not interested in changing wet and dirty nappies. I was very much on the cloth nappy train and thought that was going to be the way that I was going to have less mess, less waste, that it was going to be better for the environment, it was going to be cheaper and it was from there that I found the beautiful account that is go diaper free I believe and I will make sure and share it underneath here but it is just a fantastic resource and I'll share some of the other podcasts that I found really helpful to encourage me to be able to diaper our babies from so young or undiaper them from so young. And so Atticus was just 18 months when he was fully daytime potty trained. Archer had just turned two and only now wears nappies for like a just in case reason during the daytime. And this has been an absolute game changer for us. We have saved so much money. And here are my top tips on how you can start implementing it from today. Okay, so my tip number one, after understanding what elimination communication is and some of the benefits in terms of saving money, less mess, less poopy nappies, less cleaning, is to just let your baby be naked. Uh, much much easier to do during the summertime and during the warmer months than it is during the colder months can mean a little bit of mess on the floor certainly with a newborn who is not rolling or crawling or walking it is that little bit easier but with the process of elimination communication it means that we have to watch our babies really closely so in observing them and observing their cues we notice things about our children when they are just about to have a pee or just about to have a poo or needing to have a poo that forewarn us that this is something that's about to happen. And so we can learn a lot from just watching them. For instance, my boys, no matter what it is that they are in the middle of, they pause before they need to pee. Also in terms of their anatomy, boys are that little bit easier. Um, Girls tend to be um, much more bodily aware. Boys are busier and they don't always stop uh, as obviously but certainly for boys um their penises get a little bit larger just as they are about to have a pee (laughs) so that's a nice kind of visual cue but you might notice that they pause in what they're doing and they pull maybe a very serious face as a newborn you might notice that they make certain sounds as they are starting to or trying to have a poo kind of grunting sounds and so 
in that observation time, you are finding out more about your child. So that's your step number one. Just let them be naked. 24 hours of naked time. Don't make any plans for that day. Just sit back and watch your child. Step number two comes in then when you are able to begin pairing an opportunity to pee or poo with that cue that your infant is showing you. So in this time, you might be considering um, adding in a sign for them. So we'll go over some signs for peeing and pooing or potty time in a second. You might offer, offer them the opportunity to sit on the potty. And we'll talk later about what sort of potties that I like to use or where I like to allow my little ones to go to the bathroom. You might look at holding them in a position that is conducive to that and adding in some sort of a verbal cue. So for us, for a wee, we would go so I would notice my little one preparing to do a pee or needing to go to the bathroom. I would pick them up. I would hold them in the posture and then I would cue them. I would go and then that would remind them that now you're in a safe place. You're in a free place where it's time to pee. And this is the encouragement that you are being given if you need to do that right now. So it's not like a forced thing. And then secondly, if your little one is cueing that they need to poo, maybe they're making the movements, they're bringing their legs up towards their chest. Maybe they've paused in a kind of a squat position once they've started walking. Maybe they're looking for a little bit of privacy as they're a wee bit older. And in this scenario, maybe again, along with the, the signs, uh, the, the hand gestures, the signs for needing to do a poo, we would help bring our little baby over somewhere safe where they can poo um, where there's something to catch it and you're making the verbal cue. So for us, we would do which is like the sound for a strain, right? And so our little one knew then with the verbal cue, the position holding and whatever, and the fact that we had brought them to that safe space and the environment that's conducive for defecating, that this is a safe place for them to be. And so with observing our child, creating those, those verbal cues, perhaps the visual cues and that environment and posture for them, our little ones learn to expect not to pee and poo in their nappies. Game changer. There are so many other little bits and pieces that come with this. I'm going to talk very briefly about um, the, th the two signs that I like to use for a pee and a poo, or three signs, pee, poo, and just potty in general. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about, uh, or just dive into um, the four easy catches. So if you've been struggling to observe when your baby needs to go, the times when our bodies most likely are, can be expected to need the bathroom. So let's dive into the okay. sign. So the sign for a potty, you're going to tuck your thumb in between your index finger and you're just going to wave it like that. So that's, do you need to use the potty? To do a P is you're going to make the letter P. So you're going to start with a V. You're going to tuck your thumb in there, turn it to the side and touch your nose and away. So that if, you're, is your, if your baby needs to do a piece, so you're saying, do you need to do a pee? And then you're doing the sign alongside it. And then if your baby needs to do a poo or a number two, you're going to put your thumb inside here and pull it away, do you need to do a poo? And now onto those four easy catches. We're going to start with our wake ups. So just as your baby has woken up from a nap is a great time to offer them the potty. The next time is poops. So those are ones that are really easy for our little one to cue because generally they've got a grimaced face. They are straining and they're making it quite clear that it's the time for them to poo. Generally, your little one will, particularly as they're newborns, will poo somewhere between or be queuing to poo, beginning to poo somewhere between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning. So that's a nice one to catch. The next one then is just after your little one has eaten, particularly if they are nursing at the breast. You can either have them sitting on their potty as they're nursing or offer them the potty after they have breastfed. And then there's that last one, which I would consider an easy catch, is where you would ordinarily change a wet or dirty diaper. So if you are thinking, okay, we've got a transition time here, maybe we're getting ready to leave the house, or maybe we're getting changed for the day, or getting changed into our jammies, to offer your little one the bathroom just before you do that. So always offering your little one the potty just as you are about to put on a fresh diaper. Okay, so now I'm going to dive into the fantastic questions that I got on Instagram. I put up a little question box just talking about how you guys want me to approach the topic of potty training. What sort of information are you interested in? Do you have any questions? And I got, I suppose, five or six really good ones that were sort of repeated. And I thought I would share those ones with you. So I've got them written up here beside me, which is why I'm looking to the side. The first question is, 
potty or no potty. I think this is specifically in relation to potty training. I suppose it could also be for EC. So for elimination communication, we do for the early days into the sink for peas and just wash it away. I know that might be quite quite controversial, but for me, because little our little ones are only drinking breast milk, it is sterile, uh, pea is sterile, and we just wash it away then with some washing up with liquid, scrub the sink. We aren't eating or drinking out of the sink. We do our dishes in the dishwasher. So it was no a no brainer for me. For um, EC with poop, I will generally hold them either over a dedicated like basin. Sometimes I'll have a potty out. The baby Bjorn do a teeny tiny potty, which is just lovely. Um, really nice for smaller babies, but you can also buy like a specifically dedicated, what they call a top hat potty, um, which is one of the beautiful bits and pieces sold from that elimination communication um, Instagram page which I should have taken a pause to just have a look at the name of that lovely mama. I don't know why it completely skips my brain today, but yeah, it might come back to me, who knows. So for us, peas in the sink for elimination communication, poos in a dedicated basin bucket. For us, first time round, we had like a little stainless steel bowl. Second time round, I pretty much either did it outside in the garden <laughs> um, or would do it this is because we had a summer baby, or would do it like over the toilet, whatever was handiest for us. And then as they get that little bit bigger and I went to practice them like actually sitting on the potty, we did like the teeniest, tiniest potty that we could find, which happened to be the baby Bjorn one. Um, so that is what we did in terms of pottying for EC. For potty training in terms of that transition to the loo, I would hold my babies over the toilet from early on. So it became something that was less scary to them. I'll get into kind of the pottying hold in a few minutes. But we tended, to, we first time round with Atticus, we did like a small potty that we, we would live in a two story house. So we'd have a small potty downstairs and then we would have the toilet upstairs with the little seat that you can clip on or off. You can also get these really fabulous like fold down flaps so you'd have like the adult toilet seat and then on top of that you would have a flap down for like an infant so a smaller circle so they don't get fall into the loo that is really beautiful and a friend of mine actually has that it's um i will try and leave the link to all of these little bits and pieces down below in the description box but that's really wonderful and then we just did like a really nice step we anyhow would have like a little squatty potty uh, so a step beside the bathroom just for optimal positioning for defecating for having a poo and so that's always there anyhow and our little ones learned how to climb up onto that and then up climb up onto the toilet and the way that they have figured out to do this completely away from something that we have taught them to do is they as boys will sit forward on the toilet that's when they're very little I will see if I can edit and insert a video of Archer actually climbing up and doing that perhaps I'll share it on Instagram instead of here and maybe leave like a whole um highlight for you but it's 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 been fascinating to watch how he does that in a way that feels safe for him so um outside of that if we're in granny's house and we he doesn't feel safe sitting forwards on the toilet he will bring over the little step himself and he will bring up his little seat and he'll put that down himself and then climb up onto the toilet independently so he's now two years of age but he's been doing that for I would say the last two months and outside of that I would just assist him to sit on the toilet and hold him while he is he is sitting. There are also steps that you can get that also have the seat and handles so if your little one feels safer doing that that's great. For me um, we don't really use the potty all that often. It would be for a case of emergency if we were just in between that um, being able to know that a poo or a pee was on its way and we all of a sudden needed just to sit on the on the toilet so that's what was downstairs for emergencies but as a general rule I would always offer my children the toilet somewhere around half an hour after breakfast to do a poo and generally that means that they don't have to use their potty at all the other time that we would have a potty is if for some reason we were out somewhere for the day or we we're doing a little bit of traveling this is where that top hat potty that folds up is really really handy um, and can be really really useful but 
equally would always we would always preempt that so if for instance we were going to be in the car for a long period of time if we knew that we were going to be say getting a flight or getting on a train we would make sure that we used uh, use the toilet before we started that journey and again um somewhere around the middle of that journey and then the end of the journey so um for us potties weren't like a big thing now, that being said, if you are potty training in the more generic way, it can be really imperative to set up the space, set up the environment that is going to be conducive to your little one wanting to sit and spend a bit of time there. Whether that means putting a towel or a nice mat underneath their feet so that they feel comfortable, they've got something comfortable underneath their feet. Maybe that means having a little pile of books or, you know, sort of fidget toys in a basket beside their potty so that they want to are engaged and want to sit and stay there for a little period of time. Maybe it's some sort of a reward system within the success of using the bathroom. So some families will do like a jelly bean for every time they use the potty. For us, we don't do like food rewards, but um, I'm not totally against like a sticker chart or just having like a potty dance. So for both of my kids, my little boys, we would do, because Jess was a whole other ball game was just much much easier with her um she she really wanted to be potty trained and she was a little bit older we didn't do ec with her so she was coming up to three herself um so with the boys we would do like a proper like archer did a pee pee on the potty woohoo and the whole family would get up and like have a little dance and celebration so he knew that that was something really exciting that he did um so that was really lovely so positive reinforcement uh, also setting up the setting up the setting up the environment we talked about but a letting letting them come into the bathroom when you are using the bathroom yourself so they can see what happens they can see you sitting on the toilet having a wee having a poo maybe wiping your bum flushing the loo all of the things that we think okay is that maybe like a private thing how are our little ones meant to learn how it all works unless they see it in action and it might feel a little bit odd inviting them into that space in the very beginning but once they see it happening it all just clicks it makes so much more sense to them so setting up your environment, allowing for um, comfort and um, opportunity for them to be engaged for that period of time, some sort of positive reinforcement and allowing them into your space to see how it's done. I hope that's helpful.